In the lives of many humans, there seems to come a point where energy shifts, consciousness shifts, and that shift in energy raises questions, and the, the, the questions tend to be along the line of, is this the truth? And you question reality, you question the system you've been born in. And with that questioning arises a want for freedom. And that can be freedom for many. They want freedom from initially their work life because they recognize they want some space to investigate this energy that's pulling on them. Others just want freedom from the mind and its constant chatter, which makes many people suffer. Others want freedom from their addictions, be they intellectual and memory-based or, or physiological. It's an endless expansion of of this energy moving and making us question truth, making us question freedom. I have shared a lot as a human here about that and how that altered the life of this human sitting here. And I've begun to call it freedom from the matrix, freedom from the bondage of Satan. And the reality is that that freedom that I am referencing is a movement towards the truth and the truth is the presence and the light and the compassion of the source of all creation, which we have pointed at with the word God. But when you move towards something, we all know that you therefore move away from something. And so we must understand what we are moving away from as we move toward. And so I want to share with this video some clarity about that way between moving towards the presence and truth of God and away from that which has kept us away from it. That journey, we can call it the way between what's kept us from God, what we move away from, to be in that presence, the awakened state where we recognize the supernatural element, the spiritual element of the human walk. The way in Aramaic, Yeshua, called himself and his disciples followers of the way. And so this way is a universal path. And many have said, well, the only way to God is through Yeshua. Many have heard this. Most of you have heard this. And there is a truth if Yeshua were to stand as a follower of the way, and he stood there before you, and there was a pagan who's into child sacrifice as they were in the time and still in parts of the world today sadly are. And there was a scientist and the scientist is saying, I'm the way to God. And the pagan saying, I am. And Yeshua was standing there as a follower of the way, as he described himself, not as another man described him, not as men who came after him described him, as he himself described himself, a follower of the way. He indeed is the truth, the light and the way. He is the way to God because the way is a way from something. And universally, every spiritual teaching with substance in the world moves away from something. And so we, we have to be able to know what we move from and what we move toward. What we move toward is freedom, vitality, guidance and the presence of God. And what we move away from are those, which, those things in life which restricted us from it. This video, I want to share that path and make some clarity out of everything that I've shared to some degree. Because wherever we are as humans, we are somewhere on this way. If we are looking for the truth, if the consciousness has shifted and we are hoping for the truth and freedom. You are either in the process of liberating yourself from that in the world which is keeping you away from the presence of God. Or you are in the presence of God, you are serving that presence and its guidance, but whilst all of that is going on, you are in a battle to keep away from you that which once held you amnesically away from it. So you are either in the awakened state and fighting off everything that you moved away from to get there, or you are still trying to liberate to know the awakened state. You are somewhere in this, in this way. The universal truth of every spiritual teaching, Yeshua and, and, and Buddha and everywhere, everywhere, 
is a movement towards the will of God being your priority over the self. The self is very easy to identify once you recognize and become aware of the self. And the self, when you become aware of it, you can become aware of the roles by which you've defined who you are. And this is part of the way. You recognize that you are not a Englishman, you are not John, you are not a nationality, you are not an academic achievement, you are not a career path and a job role, you are not a relationship, you are not a son and a daughter. For when you become aware of all of these things, the true core fundamental base nature of all that you are is the awareness that is aware of them. And you still play out these roles in life, but to use them as a core identity is an error. It makes us fall into a state of almost insanity. And so we must become aware of all these things. And Yeshua backed that up by saying, unless you, unless you move away, unless you forget your, your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, you cannot be my follower. It is not a competition. It is that the identification in the mind of a self-image of being a son or a brother or a husband being the very first and guiding element of your life means that the presence of the awakened state can't guide you. And so we are moving away from a structure of self towards a structure inside consciousness where we are without self. Yeshua pointed at that also by saying, that the Bible points at that by saying that you will die and Christ will be born in you. The presence with God is that being born in you. And so this movement away towards freedom and truth is first of all important to identify the self. You must identify what is you and what is not. And you do that by becoming aware of your roles and separating from them. And many are tangled in this story of who they are based in memory, but it is not who you are. And all spiritual teachers taught this, that you must move to the space where the will of God comes over the top of the will of self. Not that the self knows God, but that the self somehow falls away so the presence of God can be known, the transformative presence. And what we have found in religion is that most people, they, they love God and they can be guided <clears throat> into this, this teaching whereby they are supposed to love and they are supposed to be caring. And they have created an identity on the self of that they have tried to program the self with that identity and it works to some degree but there must come a space where we recognize that the real transformation whereby which these writers wrote from they wrote from a space where the presence of god had transformed them i directly and if it can do so for there it can do so for you and therefore there must come a space where we let go of the identity, be it religious, spiritual, worldly, scientific, whatever it is, and allow what is left behind when we are sitting here without any words in our mind, where we look at the world without language, language memory, and knowledge. And there you enter humility. There you enter the space of accepting you, you don't know. And it is true that you don't know. For if you, I say, even where are you? You'll say, I'm in America or England. Say, where's that? It's on Earth. Where's Earth? It's in the solar system. Where's the solar system? It's in the Milky Way galaxy. Where's the Milky Way galaxy? It's in the universe. And where's the universe? Uh, ah, what is the universe? Ah, we don't know. And we mask it with our words. And we have to get untangled from that mask and that arrogance that makes us believe we know. And there we have a freedom. There we have a release whereby we start to move away from self and that self keeps us away from the, the, the actual presence. Even if the self is speaking of God, it can't necessarily know the presence. Now many will struggle therefore because now all of a sudden the, the elevation that comes from freeing ourselves from self is challenged because inside the body is habit. And habit can be intellectual compulsion for pleasure and addiction. It can come from memory, from the mind. And so we have to somehow find a way to detoxify that. And beyond there, the hormonal system of the body is also impulsively connected to things. And we have to find a way to detoxify that. And this is the road to freedom. It is away from and towards something. And so we have to detoxify the body from its addictions. And that can be uncomfortable. You must 
fast, for example, or you must simply sit and say no and be strong. It's that simple. You've had a lifetime of, of indulging in things that aren't helping you to be the best version of you or to be free and to know the truth. And it's going to be uncomfortable. And if you, if you narrow is the way and few will find it, if you can find the strength within you, if you can find the determination for the actual truth, instead of falling back to the illusion of pleasure constantly, you will break through that. And a great joy and freedom awaits you on the other side of detoxifying the hormonal system and the mind. The body is detoxified with time. It is reset with time. The mind is reset with repentance, first of all, for you have created endless programs that your behaviours are okay, and all which is draining your energy away from collecting the vitality that you are to be able to know the truth, rather you are selling it into short-term gain for pleasure and distraction, then you repent of those short-term gain activities. And when you do that, you create a counter-program inside of you. You offer a counter-program. And so here we are, we are on the way now. We are separating from the bondage that is keeping our vitality, our consciousness caught up in the world. That is the mind's identification in thought and memory of a self and the body's hooks to the world. Now, as that's occurring, there are things here that I have mentioned. Now, if you actually begin to overcome these things, you begin to move towards the truth. And the truth is that now you are living a life whereby you are honoring God instead of self. Instead of selfish ambition, selfish desire, you are honoring the vitality that is arriving with you. You are honoring the, the gift of life that you are animated and talking as and you mistakenly tried to own with your mind and your thoughts. And you begin to move in a certain space whereby you have the opportunity to be standing in the state of a righteous consciousness. And righteousness is a profoundly important state of consciousness. And when you know that you are living in a clean manner and you are honouring creation, honouring your fellow man, that you are not lying, it begins to be born. Now in Christianity, righteousness is earned simply because it was paid for. And therefore, every Christian should have a legal right to stand upright in righteousness. As long as they've repented of their errors, then everything was paid for by a perfected being. And I'll get on to that, but I covered this in a video in depth about the notion of, of a being from a, from a more perfected dimension, a son of God, one so close to the source of all things manifested inside this reality, that, that it altered the course of humanity. It altered the very framework of consciousness, the program of the 3D. Perhaps you should visit that video to find out, but consciousness, righteous consciousness, should be a frequency state that we can enter. When that happens physiologically, something does occur. Now, if you are living in the correct manner, you are living in honour of the gift of life that you are. Thereby, you are saying no to the indulgences of the world, to the, to the pleasures and desires of the body overrunning you. Not that there is a life without pleasure, <clears throat> not that there is a life without enjoying things, but that you don't live for it. You live for your purpose and those things come to you when they do. There, you have retained a certain essence of vitality. And when you retain that certain essence of vitality and you have lived a way by which you have lived free of the bondage of sin, that which is selling your energy into the world instead of retaining it for the will of God to act, activate and move your intelligence and your actions. When that happens, many Christians in this world would say you are baptized, anointed with the Holy Spirit and it is a change and, and the presence of spirit makes you supernatural. Your life changes. Everything changes. The way by which you move through reality changes. The capacities you have as a being changes. The presence of God is eradicated from the concept of belief and becomes a knowing, a presence, an actual presence. Now, I've mentioned on here the sacred secretion. So if you have managed yourself with discipline, if you have been astute and strong and you have fasted and you have prayed and you have repented and you have recovered the body 
from its programs of addiction to the world, to the, the ruler of this world. Jesus said three times the ruler of this world is certain, a force, an energy in this world that does not want you to be free, that wants your energy to be focused in the indulgences of pleasure as your God, as your owner. When you have overcome that, many Christians in the normal walk will say that you are with the Holy Spirit and you have been born again. Many say they are born again as a concept of self and there's no spiritual supernatural change in them and therefore most of the time they haven't actually been born again in the way Yeshua said they should be. And this is good because when we acknowledge that, then we can find our way out of where we currently are, which is a movement away from self, even if the self is religious identity or religious spirit as many Christians have called it. When this occurs and you are in the presence of God, you will know a great compassion wash over you. You will love, not because you should, you will love because you do, and your love will hold no condition, for the only conditioner of love in the human story is the structure of self within it. And all that you meet, you will love. You will become a loving witness to every human you meet, every scenario you meet. You will become lovingly aware of all of it. And when you move in that space of consciousness, there you are present with the Holy Spirit. While all that is happening, you need not know what's going on in your body. You don't need to know, while all that process is happening, how your food was digested. And likewise, it doesn't necessarily help to know. Biologists know a great deal about the body. It doesn't necessarily mean they know how to live well. But inside of us, as that happens, there is what I have mentioned here, the sacred secretion. And the sacred secretion is an anatomical response to the life moving into the path of the way, moving away from the self and towards the will of God, that will of great compassion, that guiding light of unconditioned love. And as you are moving toward there, then there is an anatomical response in the body. And that anatomical response is the release of that which I have labeled the sacred secretion. And when the sacred secretion is released, it alters. I won't go deep into this, but when it travels through the 33 vertebrae, just as Christ traveled for 33 years before he was crucified, then it is said to move into the thalamus. It moves into the, the tomb for two and a half days as Christ went into the tomb for two and a half days. And then it is resurrected. And you as a being are resurrected in the presence of spirit. You have a frequency state within you where you are now operating in the higher mind. And in that frequency state, you have a capacity, a new capacity whereby the, the pull of the world, the pull of self, the pull of your addictions is, is almost silent. You, you barely feel it because your frequency is so whole, the presence of the Holy Spirit, that awakening of the higher mind through the sacred secretion, that sacred anointing arriving with you, the anointing which has been misunderstood. In Catholicism, we are rubbing olive oil on one another's heads, and yet this, this wonderful life-giving substance of consciousness passes through the olive of the hypoglossal, the 12th cranial nerve, before it resurrects within you, and therefore you are anointed with the oil that passes through the olive of the hypoglossal, anointed with olive oil. The physiological activation of the higher mind gives you a new dominion, for no longer do the impulses of the body come and be able to direct your intelligence without you having an immense slowness, space, dominion over them, whereby you can pick and choose. As the impulse of the body comes, you say, no, I don't wish to do that right now. As the thought comes, which is intrusive and doesn't belong to your highest good, you have a distance between you, a slowness between you where you can say no. And this comes from an ele elevated state of frequency. Now you have to see this, that inside Christian circles, that many will say they are with the Holy Spirit, but their lives are not you see it, that the lives are not. They are still constantly wrestling with the flesh, day in, day out. And they've never spoken of this internal shift whereby that presence of the higher mind activated by anatomical response, which allows the frequency of the body to know the Holy Spirit's presence, the, the distance between it is, is known. And, and we have to observe that as beings. We have to understand that some in the realm of self, in the realm of idea and thought, 
have played out a role which hasn't genuinely transformed in consciousness within them. And so the sacred secretion is part of that way, but you do not need to know it for that way of consciousness, that higher mind will activate regardless of your knowledge of it or not. Now at a certain and particular time of the month, it comes and it renews consciousness. Right now, mine is in and I speak with more clarity, more capacity when it is. Now, the duty is when you are in that to retain it for as long as you can. And now the question is, why must it be such a struggle that we must fast and pray and overcome the world and this secretion comes once every single month and then it fades out until the next month is coming? Why on earth is that for the majority of man? This is so complex and, and complicated. Why? 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 Well, Yeshua said the world is a fallen world and that the ruler of this world is Satan. And so then we really investigate this state of consciousness that is present when we awake and after a prolonged fast when self is not present and the will of god can animate the body if if a human is to be a perfect servant of god the will of god needs to pierce every dimension into this third dimension take the hands and feet of the body and have it move immediately there should be no self saying i agree to that for there is therefore a delay there is still a state of ownership as if somehow this sense of self in the mind i own the body i own the life and therefore i am separated from the will of god and the true union with god you will see in that conscious state for all the self will come back that 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 there is no self to hand over the life and it almost seems offensive to say uh, I give you my life. Who does is the question. And when you investigate it, you see the one who knit you together in your mother's womb is the one who wishes to guide and make use of your life. And this one who wishes to say, I give you my life, was the structure which you have moved away from in the way to get to that presence. And that structure held you away from that awakened presence. Now, when? we find that state and we ask why then why is that anatomical response only occurring once a month if by god's design it is the very best option for who we are now by now in my walk i know that this this anointing this anatomical response can occur outside of the time of the moon sign but for myself when my I am Aries, so right now the moon is in Aries. I feel it potently, but at other times when I am deep in prayer, or I'm in spiritual warfare, which I'll get onto shortly, that how that plays a role in this, then then I I recognize that it's activating in a lesser manner. And therefore I recognize that the presence of the Holy Spirit can anatomically maneuver the body when it's in a certain frequency state. But the behavior of the body has to be in a certain state. It can't keep tying itself to pleasures of the world and deceptions and such. So why? And I theorize only here for... for all I know is during a 40 day water fast that at one particular time of the month something popped. And then I was led by spirit to the information about the sacred secretion, the chrism within, the Christ within all of mankind. And I recognized it through my own journey that this was occurring every month. And only as I developed over the years that it became different and I can feel it at other times. But therefore, why this one time of month? If we are such perfected beings and we walk in the Christic state of consciousness in the presence of the Holy Spirit and we are renewed when that arrives, why once in the month? And they say it's in relation to when the moon is in your star sign. I question this deeply for we, we acknowledge in the world, many of us, that there is a Satan, there are the fallen ones, there is the demonic realm, but we don't acknowledge that they may be technological. We don't acknowledge that, as Jesus said, the ruler of this world, perhaps they've interfered with the original design of God, with their immense capacities and intelligence. And I say they have, because sometimes when I have removed entities from people, they have technology. I've witnessed technology on a the dimensional forces that follow the satanic path now the satanic path to make that clear 
And I know this is a video, I hope it solidifies much for many of you. The satanic path is this, the will of God exists in the generous heart of God. Yeshua surrendered to it and therefore did the will of God as we aim to do here. The satanic path says, no, I will not surrender. I wish to supersede it. I wish to become God by understanding as many fragments as I can. I need to be God myself. And so instead of surrendering to the will of God, where there is no self and the will can animate the body, and we find that immense unity and joy and peace, then the, the intelligence makes a decision and the self, the separation of an image of self in the mind makes a decision that I wash I, I am not merely your creation i deserve to be creator i deserve to be god myself and superseded and so there seems to be higher dimensional forces who serve that notion in energy that that notion in energy is that that space and energy that is certain is that one to supersede it and a human can serve that energy and it is its own force but there are higher dimensional species from from other dimensions we can't see, other areas of the cosmos who serve that. They serve exactly that. There are cranes flying over me and making noise. They, they the satanic, Higher dimensional forces that evolved in other dimensions you can't see on other planets can choose that path. They can choose the non-Christic and choose the anti-Christic. And who is to say that they didn't interfere with this reality in an attempt or in a means to extract energy from man? The demonic realm is what? It is perhaps an extraction of man's energy so that the, the forces of Satan can be able to challenge the heavens again to become God in themselves. And therefore, I ask the question, why with the moon? And this moon which many have looked at and seems to be abnormal it seems to have been placed there it, it it seems to be that there's something off with this moon as if it's a man-made satellite some have said and i would therefore theorize that the fall of man was a movement of man in consciousness away from that state where we are in the presence of god in the presence of eden consciousness as adam and eve were in the presence of the higher mind activated within our anatomy whereby we know the voice of god and instead we were interfered with the fall of man with adam and eve they say it's symbolic obviously it's symbolic there's a garden they eat a fruit there was a serpent deceived them what if another species is the deceiver on behalf of satan what if they came and they tampered with us genetically and where do i pull that from from the oldest creation story on earth the sumerians say that we are a slave created by an alien force the mayans say we are a species created by an alien force and therefore, when you look at this, this awakened state of being and this anointing of the sacred secretion which comes once a month, you can say that perhaps there is a limitation on our original anatomy. And this limitation was placed upon us because to extract the light of God as a fuel source, that light has to fall and choose to worship the creation of a false creator God. Those who say, I will not surrender to your will, I will be God. And they gain a certain capacity. They design and build a lot of different things through understanding various fragments scientifically and they end up hacking reality and they end up hacking and creating their own realities just as the nag hammadi texts say the archons created reality so as they could feed off it and they trapped the light of god the original source which we are within us in that 3d realm in matter and so this this fallen species the ruler of this world is certain need us to fall for the light of god can only fall in a sentient life with free will and therefore this original creation that god had us moving around here as with these different capacities that we can't comprehend has been tampered with and now we are persistently falling and instead of knowing the truth which many who awaken are reborn enlighten they recognize the truth of god they recognize the truth of who they are and they recognize the illusion of maya they recognize the illusion of the flesh as yeshua said 
and in doing that they recognize the truth but the 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 false creator god that satanic force which has done what it's done it needs you to believe its creation to take your energy and therefore they limit our consciousness they limit it so as this secretion comes once a month instead of being a permanent state and then in limiting that for it gives such clarity in consciousness we can have absolute observational clarity when that is occurring we have a perfectly still mind we have a great connection to our body when the sacred secretion is in it is there it is present and and we are present we are on the knife edge of now and we have no words for it we are just there open-hearted and and and, and in this perfected presence of the holy spirit which many christians have experienced knowing nothing about the secretion i i add again I, I remind you that you don't need to know this necessarily. You can live well. You can live the righteous life without knowing this. And this will still happen inside of you. That they then needed to keep that in for the soul essence to accept the body. But they hacked it. So it only comes once a month. They, they hacked the body. And therefore, many of us, we never know this state of consciousness because we are constantly burning it up. And we are constantly, therefore, selling the soul force within us, the gift, the spark of life, the gift of the soul, the gift of the generous heart of God. And we are selling it into our own selfish desires and our own selfish short-term gain of, of pleasure. And it's not a gain at all, it's a loss. And the only gain is by the fallen ones who are extracting energy as we continue in this state of amnesia behaving like this. And so here you have this hacked fallen reality and then enters the the notion of a perfected being, beings arriving here from higher dimensions, incarnating here with the truth and trying to set us free, trying to set the species free from the belief that the flesh is the way to go, the laws of nature and their impulses and the want to kill and steal and to just breed constantly with as many as you can and not to honour one another, not to care for one another, the want to have survival of the fittest, so forget the weak, destroy them, let them burn and who cares just as those who follow the god of this world those who are ruling the world in positions of power as we speak believe this is why military force that is the god of this world the god of this world activating inside humans right now is the system we live in and the attempt to change the direction of that fallen world by yeshua and others who have awoken into that higher consciousness who have recognized the truth of this faulty faulty program going on in this reality and the truth of who they are in their call that soul essence that freedom free of the matrix the christic within all of us They see it and they try to bring that light. They try to undo what is happening. They change it. And so here you have this journey in consciousness and this state of absolute freedom. The best way to determine is you meet all you love all. You're lovingly aware of all you meet. You do not react to them. You, you do not judge them. You do not have any thought about them. You merely love all you meet. And it is a state of consciousness that exists, I tell you now. And when you arrive there, the true God, not the ruler of this world, but the true God, the source of all creation, can arrive with you and in its generous heart. For all its generous heart gives way for all things, including an infinite potential for it to have meaning, including free will for it to have meaning. It doesn't vote for everything we are doing with that infinite potential and free will. And therefore that compassion is awoken inside you and it leads you and says, come, let's build based on that foundation of compassion, that outpouring, that giving generousness with compassion. Let that happen. And instead what others do is they raise their frequency through these dimensions and they meet forces in these higher dimensions that are also corrupted by the satanic arrival of separation inside them. And so you get men like Crowley who say, love is the law, do as thou wilt is the whole of the law, and the whole of the law is love. 
and therefore that means that whatever you love is the law and this is a very vile notion because think of all of the things that are perverse in this world that men can love and women can love that do not belong here and we know they don't belong here because we have a conscience inside us and the reason we have a conscience inside us is that many of us have not lost our soul connection and with it our soul and so we recognize the truth of the light of the soul within us and awakening awakening that light within us awakening the higher mind the presence of the holy spirit the the union with the christic in our lives when you awaken that you begin to be able to to witness this new conscience this holy conscience arriving with you and this is the evidence again that by no will of ourselves are we righteous or are we holy for we as self as as human organisms we are not that we are a different being altogether but when that is the dominant when the soul is the dominant and the higher mind is activated we can stand as righteous holy beings because we have the righteous spark of god within us and that is why biblically it says those who follow the spirit are truly the sons and daughters of god for the will of god the will of unconditioned love needs openings in the 3d dimension and the only way it can find an opening is if it has humans who do not believe that they are a 3d identity they do not believe the 3d functions of the body to be who they are their memory their relationships the things they've learned the things they've achieved rather they believe that the spirit from that higher dimension becomes their identity and the, the body will come back for, as I say, when you reach that space where the Spirit of God moves and guides the life, the, the body, the mind, it's still there. It still wants to make a structure. The 3D still wants to pull you back along the way, back to, to entrapment, if it can, back to that initial space where you weren't even aware of all of this. But you don't allow it. You, you fend it off. You stay in your elevated frequency. And I tell you now that this works. And Yeshua said, be a follower of the way. And it is true, we must be followers of that way. We must, and universally that way is to abandon self and seek the will of God. Not that self does the will, but that self is gone so the will animates. And there's a big difference. And it's very important because then it's a journey in consciousness. It's not a self trying and trying and struggling. It's a journey in consciousness. It's a space where the, the heart becomes much louder than the mind to the point the mind's blotted out and is it worth doing yes for it does change this reality for inside this realm when you expand your frequency like this you also decode a different bandwidth of reality and there you begin to witness that there are other dimensional forces here and they are feeding on the humans who are focused in suffering in misery in addiction they are feeding off of them when those humans are constantly impulsively indulging in pleasure the humans barely connected to the pleasure because they are feeling that sensation through the human instead the humans rarely fully embodied as they do this and so these entities, they are here, and you can't fight them as a self, but that purity can purify them. That opening to that higher dimension can purify them. And when that begins to happen, and you begin to purify, then wherever you move in the world, you'll be able to begin to reconfigure reality towards the will of unconditioned love. For if you go to a part of the world, if you go to a part of the world today where there is great suffering and the enemy is moving there and you try to make change without the frequency of the Holy One with you, the frequency of the Christic with you, the frequency that purifies with you, then those forces are constantly going to undo the work that you do. But if you go there and the forces can only work in humans, just as God in this 3D dimension can only work in sentient life, those forces have no power because they are if you imagine a river of light the christic is upstream to their river of light they are a higher dimension than this one but the christic's higher still and so when you come in connected to that higher dimension they are driven out and therefore that which you wish to change in the world actually changes whereby if you try to do it from the 3d what will happen is that those forces they will eradicate it because every human you meet is not necessarily going to be moving with the christic and with compassion and therefore they are potentially going to be in a frequency state where the enemy can move in them 
if you can embody the uh, a gap in this 3d dimension where the holy frequency can come through you the holy spirit then that spirit will do the work it will move these things away and align reality to the to the will of compassion true compassion and it and in my life i share as a testimonial at the end to this message that eight years ago i didn't know why i would be in africa and right now i am having conversations thanks to this amazing youtube community thanks to people all around the world opening their hearts thanks to people who are somewhere on that way we are discussing solving the problem of some of the most marginalized, ostracized, suffering children in the human story for a whole country. And if we solve it for that country, we can solve it for other countries. Eight years ago, I had no money, just a laptop and a camera and this awareness, this awareness of the way. And so, biblically, it says in James 1.27, religion that God sees as pure and faultless is this to serve the widows and care for the orphans and to stay unpolluted by the world. When you arrive in the presence of God, in the awakened state, free from the matrix and all the programming it's giving you, all the bondage, the false notions of freedom, etc., etc., the false toolbox of how you operate in this reality, there you will be called to serve those who suffer, the innocent who are in need. And there you will continue the journey of keeping the world off you. And what we must do is support one another in reaching that space and support one another in staying there and keeping the world from being unblem and keeping ourselves from being blemished by the world, the poles of the world to make us indulge in the worldly activities again, to make us care about about uh, cultural status and things of this nature because that all is a pittance to God. God doesn't care about all of that. What he cares about is your ability to align to the will of the Christic and the will of the Christic aligns when you escape, as it were, separate silent self. When you silence self, you silence thought and thought is, is ultimate, the start of all separation from God. It is part of the technology potentially, I would call it, of the fallen ones in this dimension is that state inside the mind of thought for as i sit here now if you think nothing if you conjure no image in memory if you just sit there you will fall into absolute unity with god and the second you name something you separate yourself from it or the second you analyze it you make an analyzer inside you and a subjective analysis outside and that separates unity and unity True unity is not an idea, it's not a concept. It is a genuine state of consciousness and that state of consciousness is on the way or towards here. And I have no idea where I am on the way. I just know what I came away from and I'm very well aware of what had me in bondage and I'm aware that I have been in this space where the will of God directed the organism sitting here talking to you and the soul within it and there was no self saying I agree or disagree with that it was a very perfectly still mind and I believe that that is is the higher mind and I believe anatomically that that occurred when the the sacred secretion was in in its place and I believe that many know that space without even any knowledge of the sacred secretion and there, with a perfectly still mind, something here pulls and you go. And love manifests around you, change manifests around you. In my instance, a village, a family of 200 and growing manifest around me, 150 dogs, this community. All because we have decided to move in the way. And God brings those who are on the way to aid in your journey or if you are going to fulfill a normal role in life which many are doing i fulfill a normal role here as a charity founder there are many charity founders in the world then it doesn't have to be moving to a foreign land it can just be that on that particular day you allow the mind to be still so that call comes and says say this to that person because they really need it and god needs to deliver something to them spirit needs to deliver something to them because in this world the wrong message is is delivered to us constantly by the media and those that control it and we are constantly moving in this horrendous 
frequency of separation and fear and, and it's all a trap it's all disempowering but the truth is as Yeshua said that we must be followers of the way and the way is universally the same it is away from something and towards something be aware what you're moving away from and how to overcome it addiction of the body, addiction of the mind, impulses of the mind be aware of them, separate from them the structure of self where all of these things are contained be aware it's not you and begin to separate from it and begin to awaken into the way and the ironic thing is that you may feel like there's somewhere to go in the world but of course all of this is a journey inward back to the core divine essence within you for warn to the lawgivers they take away the keys to the kingdom for they do not enter within and many will say where is the kingdom lo here lo there and Yeshua said for well, truly I tell you the kingdom of God is within you the way is an inward journey to the truth of all you are the freedom of all you are and the capacities of all you are that was all I guess a long video but If you want the truth, you make time for it, I guess. God bless, guys.